It's finally time to begin the reassembly of my Newtonian and we are also going to upgrade it with a number of new parts and we're also getting into some heavy modifications today. Now before we begin talking about all this stuff, we need to talk about the focuser here because the new focuser has a slightly bigger draw tube, that is the tube that goes in and out of the focuser here, than my old one. And that means the hole in the telescope is too small. So we're going to fix that. And um, the whole pattern for the mounting bracket is also larger, so we don't need to drill new holes. And I also made a decision on what to do for this. I'll show you that in a minute. But first, it's time to crack out the power tools and um, cut some new holes. Now, while that wasn't the prettiest job ever done, I'm pretty pleased with it for being the first time ever I used a tool like that. Now, before we begin installing anything, this thing is rolling around and I want to get it back into two clamps so we get a little bit more stability out of this. Problem is, I'm not really happy with... I mean, the two clamps are fine. I don't like the distance, I don't like this base plate. So, we're going to fit it on a larger base plate and we're also going to be attaching a top handle here so we have a place where we can mount our guide scope, which I'll get into in just a second. And of course, I do not have anything that fits the bolt hole here on the top. So um, I'm gonna have to run to the store to get some. Damn it, I keep forgetting that this is not metric, but imperial, so they don't fit. Okay, um, I'm gonna see if I can get some imperial somewhere. All right, so what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna attach the lower plate and we're gonna try to get the distance so that we can always attach the top bar. Okay, that's approximately where it needs to go, I think. And then of course, we'll get this when we actually find some proper screws that that fits. Now, I don't know where the balance point is going to be exactly. So for now, I'm just eyeballing it and then I can always fine tune that later. I want to install the focusing tube. We have the bracket. I have the screws that I saved from earlier. So this should be hopefully now pretty straightforward. Just I drilled four new holes that should fit the bolt pattern on this. So this will go on here and then the focusing tube will go in here. I want to get to actually installing the spider again. But before we do that, before we get that in, I want to clean the main mirror and I'm going to do that with just some cotton and demineralized water. So all I'm going to do is just slightly wet the cotton and then swipe the mirror. Only swipe the mirror once per cotton, never reuse. You can turn it around and use the other side, but you never re-swipe because if it picks anything up, you can put scratches in the mirror. But first, I am just going to Use a little lens blower to just blow any loose debris 
and might be sitting in here. I get a nice big piece of cotton. And then we're gonna go and give that mirror a clean. Okay, did actually pick up a few small pieces of debris. So now I can't use that side anymore. So I'm gonna fold it around to get a clean piece. Now after we've done this, you might be able to see there are slight little droplets of water on the mirror now. The best way to remove them, dry cotton. Fold it up so you don't get too many loose. I have this little like knob here where you don't have any too loose ends. And then you just slightly, lightly dab the mirror where the, where the water is. So now we can repeat the same process here for the spider. And there you have it. That is clean mirrors. Okay, you might have noticed that I, up here at the front, have made this small notch here. The reason I've done this so that I can put my dew heater around the main mirrors uh, of the secondary mirror. I'm gonna run the wire out here, actually on the back side, properly, maybe on the front, I don't know. I'm gonna run the wire out along one of the spider veins. This slot here aligns up just slightly off from one of the, um, one of the spider veins. The wire is then going to be able to go in here through this hole and then I've sized that hole in such a way that it fits with this little rubber rubber. So that's going to go in there to protect the wire so it doesn't get cut. And this slot here is going to get covered up by the edge so that when that goes in, that's going to cover up the majority of that slot. if you can even see this well, there it sits the cable is now routed yeah, there's a bit of a it shows a little bit here I'll see if I can maybe route that a little bit prettier as I said that whole slot is being covered up by this plate now we have permanently attached dew heaters I'm actually pretty happy with that now while we wait for the last bolt to show up to actually be able to mount all these things what we can do now is we can attach this. This is the autofocuser from TubeTech, as you might have seen in the beginning of the video. I am going to try to go for a TubeTech build, um, mostly because I was very curious about the, um, the Stella Vita from TubeTech. Now, this is a competitor to the ASI Air, but where the ASI Air is brand locked, so you can only use ASI Air equipment with it, this is not. That means I can use my ASI Air main camera, which I'm planning to put on here with this, um, I just got some of two tech, two text stuff because I was kind of curious about them um, and I want to try and do it. I am going to do a full review of this later. So if you are interested, stay tuned to the channel um, for that. But for now, what we're going to do is we are going to get a focus motor installed. I should say that all the stuff that you see here, I bought myself with my own money and I've not talked with TubeTech about making this, so this is not sponsored or anything. Okay, guys, I need to talk to you because I feel like I'm losing my mind here. Look at this. So, you know how we started with, with like these threads here, right? So we got we got bolts. I went out and I got bolts, and these bolts they they kind of fit, but 
not really, right? So they, they, they're close, okay. So then I thought, ah, this is just because these are, <laughs> because these are like, um, um, like imperial threat. So I, I like sourced, I don't know how hard it is to find like imperial threats in Europe with like hex things and everything. I had to go to like a dedicated Harley store. But this one, this one is almost there, like go to there, but it's like crooked and it's cross threading and I, it, it, it doesn't really fit. Um, I tried to like force it in a little bit, but I could see it just began to strip the threads here on the top of the, of the thingy. So, so, so those doors didn't fit. So then I thought, ah, but maybe, maybe since those M6 didn't work, there is like a very, very uncommon standard M7. Normally you go M6, M8. So I, I sourced M7, I couldn't find them hex, but these, these, these are also too big. And no matter what, I have tried every bolt under the sun and nothing fits. Okay, so now we're going with a completely different approach. If we can't find a bolt that fits the hole, we're gonna make the hole fit the bolt. So I got this. This is a, what's called a helicoil kit. Basically, we are going to take the, 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 the drill bit, that one there, we're gonna drill those holes out so they're gonna be bigger. Then we're gonna tap it so that they're tapped with new threads that's gonna be too big. And then we're gonna take these helicoils, little like spring kind of things, screw that in and that's gonna bring it back down to a M6 standard so that these will fit on here. And I have tested that, these will fit in here. And that should repair it. I've, this has been the last week of my life. <laughs> I, I'm going insane here. There we go. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I know that on camera, this is probably going to seem super silly, but, ah, but this has been a week of my life. The key night off, you might have noticed, there are two small holes here on this side. This is where the finder scope originally was located. I still have the bolt for that, but they're too short for what we're going to do now. Um, I'm going to mount, mount a little uh, dovetail on it. This dovetail though uh, has a flat bottom, so it's gonna like rock all over the place. So I just 3D printed like a plate that has the same curvature on one side as the tube and it's flat on the other side with the same hole pattern inside. Very straightforward, very easy. Because we've gone through so much work, I have gone ahead and um, painted two bolts here as you can see with some very, very matte black paint so that hopefully we're not gonna get any internal reflections from the bolts themselves. Okay, now with that nice and firmly on there, no wiggle, we can move on to this. This is the Stella Vita. This is um, basically like an ASI competitor from TubeTech. But let me give you guys a quick unboxing. We have this box here. Of course, have the Stella Vita itself. This one, I believe, is for the antenna. Yeah. So DC in. Power port, this is the same size as does the ESIR. USB-C port over here, there. And SD card slot, so that's actually quite nice, I like that. So you can expand it with your own SD cards. Ethernet, and one of these USB ports is labeled Wi-Fi. And exactly as on the ESIR, DSLR port on the side and four output ports. Wi-Fi antenna. Do we need a Wi-Fi dongle? Why would it need a Wi-Fi dongle if it has an antenna? What else do we have here? SD card. We got a USB cable. It has the weird USB B port here on one end, but no USB B port anywhere on the device. And then we have a lot of, these are all power cables. Yeah, these are just all power cables. But as I said, full review coming to the channel later when I have had a chance to actually play around with this. So for now, Where's the best place way to install this? I assume this way, because we're not really, can I, am I gonna interfere with my, hmm, hmm. This is a problem, I'm gonna, I'm interfering I think with the mount here, or with the focus motor. 
I don't really need this side of it, so I'm going to put it this way, and I can just catch it with one of the screws here. And this is not going to be super critical. It's not like this is going to carry any weight or anything like that. It's just going to carry this. Stella Vita installed. But now I think we need to talk about guide scopes. I got this guide scope here from Williams Optics. This is their UniGuide 32. This is a 120 millimeter focal length guide scope. This is not going to go on this because I am actually going to replace this and put this on my other scope and then take that scope over here. So let me just go and show you why. All right, so here we have my Williams Optics um, refractor. This is my wide field setup. This has, with the reducer that's built into the fill flap in the back here, this has a focal length of 344, I think, millimeters. But the guide scope on here is 200 millimeters. So the guide scope is almost the same focal length um, as the main scope. This is a little big for this, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, put this on here instead of that one, and then that one's gonna go over here on this one. This focal length of, of the, um, the, um, the Newtonian here, by the way, is 750 or something like that, 740 something. Um, it's pretty close to 750. So, whoops. So I think that one's gonna be a better match here and the smaller one is gonna go over there. And to go with it, I got a guide camera also from TubeTech. I'm going to put the model number on screen because it's long and I don't want to sit and read out this. So, oh, that's a little, I don't know what I'm going to use that for, but there's a little <laughs> like string in it so it doesn't run away. I don't know. Oh, cap on here. That's actually quite nice. And I'm not sure if I'm going to need the extension ring. I'm, I don't think I am. But for now, we're just gonna put it in. We're gonna have to focus this up later anyway. So we're just gonna temporarily lock this in. We're gonna orientate this along with the scope approximately. Other than that, we got a um, cable for um, ST4 guiding. But the one we're gonna be using is the USB cable that we see in here. This is very long. It just needs to run over there. So we're gonna have some excess here. So that's gonna go over there. This one was the heater for the secondary mirror. It's gonna go over there. And I also got a, whoops, ah, come here. A new heater band for this one. Oh, we can just quickly go ahead and attach a heater band to that. And then we have another cable. Now I think all there's really left to do is just a little bit of cable management and um, then I think we're good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is done. Look at that. Everything, almost like 99%. Like, obviously the RCA cables here. I have ordered like a, a Y splitter so that can go into one of the power ports here. That's in the mail, but, and I also need to 3D print some, some cable management clips up here. Um, apparently the, the, uh, the Stella Vita is slightly wider than the ESI here. Um, no, now we know because the ones that, printed, that was intended for an ASIA Plus did not fit on here. So, well, anyway, um, as you can also see, I ended up actually did running a cable back here. I said I didn't want to do that in an earlier video, but I, am, I ended up doing it anyway, because, well, we have the buttons. We can turn it off if we don't need the fan. And now it's just easier than I have to go look around for a cable. I like this setup. I'm really looking forward. I should now be able to just... Now I feel a little bit more comfortable moving all this other stuff because now... Mm, okay, so how do we do this the easiest way now? I, it would be easier if that was not there. But I think I'm just gonna make long strips now. 